In this video, we're briefly going to talk about functions and function notation. So, functions. We'll start by defining a function. So, definition. A function f from s to t is a rule that to every element little s and capital S assigns an element little f of s in capital T. The notation that uh, we will use for functions is the following. So notation So we have our function f dot dot, and it's going from s to t. s is called the domain of the function, and t is called the codomain of the function. Let's look at uh, some simple examples. So let's look at ex example. Let's look at the function f from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers given by f of x equals x squared. This is a really simple function. The domain is the set of real numbers and the codomain is also the set of real numbers. If you were to graph this function, there's the y-axis, there's the x-axis, so x and y. And you're probably familiar with this graph. It is a parabola. You'll notice that the range of the function, and I'm putting it in quotes because we never defined it, would be 0 to infinity. So it's not equal to the codomain, which is the set of real numbers. So the range is smaller than the set of real numbers, right? So uh, not, not the entire set. We'll come back to this example later. There are special types of functions, uh, functions called one-to-one, -one, functions called onto, and functions called bijective. Let's go ahead and define all three of those uh, very briefly. So we say a function. f from s to t is onto if for all little t and capital T we can find some little s and capital S such that f of s is equal to t. So in this example that we have up here uh, our function is not onto. So in this example, f is not onto. And you might say, well, why? Well, we can take the number, say, negative 1. So negative 1 would be a y value here. So negative 1 is in the set of real numbers. But there is no x. such that f of x is equal to negative 1, because that would mean that x squared is equal to negative 1, which does not work for real numbers. So this example here, uh, this function would not be on 2. Okay, it would not be on 2. If we change this example that you see here, if we changed the codomain to 0 infinity, and we kept everything the same, then in this case, 
it would be onto. Because now the codomain is different. So given any value in this codomain here, we could certainly find an x, right? We're not allowed to use negative numbers anymore because we threw them away from the codomain. A function f from s to t is 1 to 1. 1 to 1. If whenever you have f of s1 equal to f of s2, this implies that s1 is equal to s2. So if this is true for all little s1 and little s2, um, we say the function is 1 to 1. Equivalently, we can write the contrapositive of this. So whenever s1 is not equal to s2, then the y values are not equal to each other. In our example up here, our function um, is uh, 1 to 1. No, it's not 1 to 1. <laughs> it's not 1 to 1, right? Um, here's why. Um, I just drew a horizontal line here that crosses the graph. Maybe this is 1, and maybe this is negative 1. So what we have here are two different x values. So we have negative 1 not equal to 1, right? But in this case, f of 1, if you work out f of 1, you just get 1 squared, so you get 1. And f of negative 1, that's negative 1 squared, so you also get 1. So we have negative 1 not equal to 1, but f of negative 1 equal to f of 1. So this violates the definition of 1 to 1. So in this example here, our function is not 1 to 1. If you have a function that's 1 to 1 and onto, it's called bijective. So a function f from s to t that is 1 to 1 and onto is called bijective. Okay, And bijective functions are important because if you have a bijective function, you can find the inverse function. So the inverse function would be f inverse. And instead of going from s to t, it would go from t to s. So this is the notation for the inverse function. And this will exist uh, when uh, the function is a bijection. Extra knowledge, another way to say one-to-one -one is injective. And another way to say onto is surjective. A lot of information in this video, and I'm giving a few examples, just defining a bunch of stuff, trying to keep it, just giving you as much information um, as I can. Let's go ahead and look at some, some examples, some more examples uh, of functions. Let's say we have f uh, from the uh, set of real numbers to, um, how about, um, negative 1 comma 1. And we're going to define this by f of x equals the sine of x. This is a familiar function. So here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis, so x and y. And so the sine of 0 is 0, so it starts here, and it just does this, and it makes a nice pretty little wave, keeps going, and then goes this way as well. Um, the range here is 1 to negative 1. This function would be onto, right? Because um, given any uh, y value in this set, we can find a value of x such that sine takes us there. So given y in negative 1, 1, we can certainly find, so we can find x and r such that f of x is equal to y. In other words, uh, sine x is equal to y. Right? And it's clear from the picture. Right? You can probably find infinitely many choices of um, x. Right? So if you draw a horizontal line at your y, if this red line is y, you have, look at all the places it intersects. Each point of intersection 
will give you an x value that you can send to y. You'll notice this function um, is not uh, one to one. Right? The function is not one to one. Uh, so what people often do is they restrict the function. So instead of looking at this function, people look at this one. So they take the same function from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 to negative 1 to 1, and they call it the sine function. So what we've basically done is we've restricted the domain of the sine function. Let's blow it up and draw it. So here's negative pi over 2. Here's pi over 2. And now you see our sine function is going to look like this. Here's 1, here's negative 1. And now it's a one-to-one -one function, right? It's a one-to-one -one function. By the way, another way to characterize one-to-one -one functions graphically is the horizontal line test. So if you draw a horizontal line, it only crosses once, it's one-to-one. -one. So you see it's one-to-one -one in this case. It's certainly onto, so it has an inverse function. So we define the inverse function from negative one-to-one -to, -one to negative pi over two to pi over two by, you guessed it, f inverse of x equals the arc sine of x. The same things are done, or similar things are done for uh, cosine and all the other trig functions. In order to find inverse functions, we tend to restrict the domains so that they become bijections and so that we can find uh, an inverse. One more example. Say we have f uh, from the set of real numbers to the set of positive real numbers. And we're going to define it by f of x equals e to the x. Let's look at the graph of e to the x. There's y, there's x. So e to the x has a horizontal asymptote at 0. And then so the graph of e to the x would look something like this. right? So this would be 1 to 1. right? It passes the horizontal line test. It's certainly on to. So it has an inverse function. The inverse function is a very familiar function and it's defined from r plus to r, right? You switch the domain and codomain, and the inverse function is the natural logarithm of x, right? That's your inverse function. Uh, that's the inverse of e to the x. So I hope this video has been helpful. It was just kind of a, a, just a flurry of information, uh, lots of definitions. The most important thing you should get from this video uh, is maybe the notation, right? S is called the domain. T is the codomain. We talked about a lot of stuff uh, in this video, so hopefully it was helpful and hopefully it made sense. That's it.